Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. It, looks, it seems like it's the middle of the night, nice. doesn't it? It is a little evening. Let's stand at this place. We're gonna we're gonna start with a song, and we have a, a special special time of prayer today. So let's let's just lift up the King of Heaven.
Thank you so much for gathering with your people. We just come to meet with you, with each other. Lord, I just pray tonight that you would just inhabit the praises of your people, Lord. We just come and say we need you. We surrender to you, Lord. I pray that tonight you would align our hearts with yours. And we just offer all this time and space to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, welcome everyone. I'm glad to be with you. Um, we're doing something a little different tonight, and I will explain it. That's why the band is still hovering up here. Um, but I just want to share one announcement. Well, I want to share a couple announcements, actually. <laughs> Sorry. One primary announcement. Um, one announcement is we're glad you're here. If you are visiting with us in person or online, uh, we'd love to just get to know you better, uh, add you to our newsletter. We have a lot of things coming up over the next couple of months, so we'd love for you to be aware of them. There's a QR code at your table if you want to scan that and just give us your email address and your info. If you'd like to get together or want a phone call to follow up, we're happy to do that. Otherwise, we can just add you to our newsletter list. If you don't have a smartphone, in the back by the black box, there's um, a card you can just physically write out your information and slip it in the black box. But we'd love to add you to our newsletter. Um, I also wanted to just let you know, this, all this information will be coming out in your newsletter moving forward, but I wanted to give you a snapshot of the month of December, because I don't know about you, like Dave and I already have, did you happen to make a slide for that, Greg? Okay, awesome. Dave and I already have our big, huge calendar up for the year because stuff starts to just feel like it revs up and December sometimes can just feel like it comes upon you. So this will come out in this week's newsletter, um, but if you want to snap a picture of it, just so you have the dates and know things that are going on. So we're going to pause from our sermon series for the month of December, and uh, the Lord gave me a verse, Romans 12, 12 through 13, when I was just praying in general about life and our church and myself, and this verse just kept resonating with me, which is, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. This is sort of an, just an invitation of the Christian life, quite honestly. But it just felt like, especially in this season, this just felt like the invitation. And so as I was pr kind of meditating on that for a couple of months, I was just thinking about the month of December and how we could be thinking about what it would look like, the idea of Advent around the table, of just connecting with God and each other in a deeper, quieter, less chaotic way. So less information and just more connection. Um, and so the first uh, week of December, we're actually going to do a Friendsgiving potluck because Thanksgiving comes late this year, and that first Sunday is that week after Thanksgiving. And we will be doing that, for those of you with little ones, in the big kids' room. That way you don't have to chase your kids around. Or you, they can just go play Legos, okay? So we're going to actually, when you first come in to your left is the big kids' space. You can drop your food off there and then come in the sanctuary for a time of worship and communion, and then we'll head over and have a meal together. So half the service will be our meal together. So the service is still at the normal time. There'll be a sign-up sheet for you to sign up for what you're going to contribute. Dave and I will do the main course. We're not going to cook a turkey, but we'll buy some turkey. Um, and you guys can bring the sides. And we'll do just a time of connecting as family. And then I'll go over these in more detail as they come, but just so you can be thinking about it, because December is going to come quickly. Um, the patient and affliction idea is that sometimes when you are in a season that's very challenging and painful, um, just connecting with a brother or sister 
can be so life-giving, whether it be a phone call, going for a walk, uh, going out for coffee, being invited over for a meal, maybe something different like a game night or out to the movies, any sort of thing. So I want you to be praying about, like, who do you know in your faith community that might just could, could use some extra love in this season and be thinking about it? You can actually do that on December 8th, like that day or around that time. And then I want you to be thinking about ways that you can be praying for and blessing your neighbors or, or coworkers or people outside the church. And it could be as simple as taking them some extra Christmas cookies if you bake, or hosting an event, um, or just praying for the people that live right around you. Um, so I want you to be thinking about that. December 22nd, rather than meeting up here at all, I'm inviting all of you to serve in the meal site that meets in the basement below us. So we show up at the same time, 4.30 in the basement, and you'll either be dishing up food or you'll be walking around and refilling cups for coffee and water or you'll be helping with dishes. You'll, we'll give you an assignment and we'll be just blessing the people from the community that come to eat. If you need childcare that night, we will offer uh, children's ministry. So if you need a place for your kids to go so you can participate. All of that, again, will be in the newsletter and you need to sign up and then indicate if you do need help with your kiddo, okay? And then finally, we are doing a combined Christmas Eve service this year, and so it's going to be in Grafton. We're going to combine with the Grafton Vineyard and do, just do it together to have like a big can same candlelight Christmas Eve celebration. I know some of you do not have transportation to get there, and so we want to make sure you can get there. So if you want to be part of that and you need transportation, you can tell us yourself. Just come and let me know. It will also be in your newsletter, a chance for you to sign up and say, I need transportation, and we'll make sure that you're a part of that so no one's left out, okay? So that'll also be at 4.30. So everything's at 4.30, so that's one thing that's staying the same. Okay, I wanted you just to know all those things are coming up so you could be preparing in your prayers and your thoughts about how you want to participate. Tonight, I don't know if any of you are aware, but there's an election coming up. Okay, are you tired of hearing about this election? I am so tired of thinking about it. I'm so tired of the text. I am tired of the things in my mailbox. I am tired of the fighting on social media. I'm tired of all of it. Um, but it is a big deal. There's, it is a very, uh, there's a lot going on. This is a very unsettling time in our country. And there's a lot of people who are very anxious. And so I thought tonight, I had nothing profound to say to you about this election. You've heard enough, right? I've been sending you like tons of podcasts and I know many of you have shared articles with me. Like we have enough thoughts. <laughs> so I'm not gonna add to the thought. Instead, what I wanted to do is join what I'm hoping is a lot of the church around America and around the world even who are praying um, for, for God's kingdom to be established here on earth and um, for his justice and for his mercy and his presence in a very anxious time. And so I thought it would be more meaningful if that we as a body just pray into the election this week. Um, particularly because I have a sense that regardless of the outcome, there's going to potentially be some turmoil that follows and typically, the groups that are most impacted by this kind of turmoil are the marginalized communities. That's who's most vulnerable to what might be the aftermath of the election. And so I especially want to be just praying for the people in our city and our country that will be in some way, who may be very anxious right now or affected by it. And so, I, if you haven't picked up, I, I have some copies out by the coffee, and I put some on your tables, this election guide. Um, you may or may not want to use the guide as we pray. You may just want to pray however you feel led, but I wanted to provide that for you. I got this, if you're familiar with Peter Gregg, who is, he's from the UK. He started the 24-7 prayer movement that's all over the, the world, basically. And I think his resources are really well done and really thoughtful. Um, so I decided not to reinvent the wheel. 
But if you look through it, he just kind of guides you in praying, you know, for the process, which I, I know there's some voting sites that are so afraid of, a, you cannot imagine the amount of protection that they've had to create around some of the voting sites, like literal high level protection. Like that's how serious it is in some of these voting sites. So just praying for the p process and for peace, um, praying for our nation in general, um, praying for the church. I think that's really important that the church would become a place, a non-anxious presence, a place of hope, a light in the darkness, a place of peace, a place of unity. We're not all going to agree on everything, but that, our, our, that we, would, we would all be submitted to Jesus as the true king and to his kingdom and, and his values for humanity. Um, that we'd be submitted to him and our hearts be aligned with him. And so we can be praying for Big C Church, um, praying for the future, and I think probably the most important is the last one, which is praying for justice um, and for, for anybody that might be impacted in a really negative way. Now, I know that many of you have felt discouraged and kind of depressive <laughs> about everything that's happening. We don't have to pray, I mean, feel whatever you feel. But we can pray with hope and expectation and joy that God is in control and he is moving us um, toward the establishment of his kingdom. And so we're praying in alignment with that reality. Okay? So during our time of prayer, we're going to start with worship. So we've got several, three more worship songs to move up, kind of get us in a good space. And then I'm just going to open, allow you to pray however you feel led. If you like to just pray by yourself, quietly, you can do that. If you like to pray with other people, you can gather around the tables. You can sit next to some people and pray out loud together. Or you can pray out loud by yourself. I was, I was at a Korean prayer service once, and they will often just all start praying out loud at the same time. And it was really cool. It was like really powerful. So there's no like one right way to do it. It just depends on how you feel led to pray. You can kneel, you can sit, you can stand, you can pace. I pace a lot when I pray. Um, feel free, okay? We're going to open up the space for you to pray as you feel led through this. And then I will kick us off. I will start the prayer time, and we'll just spend the time praying. And we'll close our time taking communion together and open up the space a little bit to pray for each other if we feel led in any way to pray for personal prayers. So that's kind of the format tonight. Cool? All right. Kick us off, band. <laughs>
This is sacred space. This is where you be with us. Holy ground, we are standing on. Thank you. 
I shared this with some members of our people that meet to pray. Um, the Lord had given me a word this summer. Uh, I felt like he told me to dig a new well. And it was really strange because those aren't, that's not like a thing I think about. So it really felt like it came from the Lord. And I asked him, how do I dig it? Like, why do I actually do it? And I felt like he just said, worship, prayer, and surrender. And those have just been my theme. And I, I am realizing I so often, we're such individualists in America, and especially like Northern European American types. We think about prayer and worship, all these things in such a private way, our own kind of private personal journey and formation. And I just want you to know there's real power when we gather to worship and when we pray together. There's power when you worship and pray on your own too, but it's not just about our own journey. It is about our journey, but it's also like there's real power when the church comes together and just says this is this is who we what we think power looks like a god that laid his power down out of love that that's actually what's going to change the world is his love and there's power when we come together and we proclaim that together there's power that goes out from here it's not just an experience we have here it actually changes things in a supernatural way and so as we move into this time of prayer you may not feel a whole lot coming out of you you right now you might feel like you're kind of going through the motions listen a mustard seed of faith <laughs> jesus said can move mountains so the fact that you're in this room you at least believe when you're praying that there's a god hearing your prayers and that is powerful as we come together so as we move into this time of prayer do not think this is just like uh you know um an exercise we're working through for some kind of enlightenment this is actually we believe that our collective prayers with the greater church have powers to shape the world and so that's why we're taking this time to do this so um uh, pray with people, pray quietly, pray out loud, pray in tongues, pray however you feel led. If you feel like the Lord's speaking to you in some way and giving you a word for our congregation or individual words for people in the congregation, you can jot those down. We can have a chance at the end to share those, okay? But we're just going to now move into a time of prayer. If you're joining us at home, I guess you could pause or fast forward or just be praying along with us if you're with us now. We'll be spending just some time in personal prayer.
Um, as we continue to pray, if you um, feel led to pray for anybody in the room, um, did you want to ask the Holy Spirit if there's anyone in the room that God might have a word for or um, he may want to bless in some way? Feel free to just go to that person and pray for them during our kind of last five, six minutes here of prayer, and then I'll close our time together with communion. So you can continue to just pray as you feel led about the election and about our nation, our city. But if you also feel led to pray for someone individually in our faith community um, and just minister to them, feel free to just get up and do that.
Um, if, you, if you would like prayer for something, um, do you want to just pop your hand up? Joanna and Israel, anybody else? So can we have some people gather around and pray for them? Before we start praying, I'm just going to go ahead and lead us in communion, but then I just want you to take all the time you need to pray. So let's just take communion together, and, um, and then you can continue to pray. You can head out whenever you need to. If um, you're sitting at a table, there should be communion cups at your table. If you're in the aisles, um, you could head to a table and grab one. My biggest sense when we were praying just now is I just felt like, I just felt really impressed just to pray for the people of God, to be the people of God in this season. Um, And we just walk in the footsteps of Jesus. (laughs) And so, Lord, we just come humbly and receive your humble heart that was willing to lay down your life for the world. And so the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat this, do this in remembrance of me. Let's take the bread together. And after supper, he took the cup. And as he poured out the cup, he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins, for a new covenant of grace. Let's walk in the freedom that Jesus bought for us with his own blood. Let's take the cup together. So Holy Spirit, I just um, thank you for breathing your prayers into us as we breathe them back to you. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth, in our country, in this city, right here in our church, with the people sitting here in front of me as it is in heaven. Restore our bodies and our minds and align our hearts with yours, Lord. We pray for peace and protection in this week ahead. And Lord, we surrender to you. We bow down to you. And Lord, we just ask right now where there's anxiety that you would bring your peace, Lord. And where there's despair, I pray for your hope. In Jesus' name, amen. So please go ahead minister to each other, continue to stay in the posture of prayer if you feel like you still need to pray, and you can head out whenever you're ready. Bless you.